Good afternoon everybody, it's Tess Crawley here. Happy to see you this evening. Um, if you've not met me before, I'm a clinical and forensic psychologist and I'm the director of Dr. Tess Crawley and Associates Psychology Practice. And we've got offices in Hobart and Launceston and we've got psychologists and social workers also working within our team and some of them travel out to rural centres in Tasmania. Um, today, I think you can see my little friend Robber, his name's Robber. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about medication. Um, somebody was talking to me recently and asking me a question about uh, medication and what psychologists feel about the use of medication uh, for mental health conditions. Um, psychologists uh, do not prescribe medication in Australia. Um, I can't speak for other countries of the world. Um, you might notice that I have a DR in front of my name and that's because I have a PhD in clinical psychology. I'm not a medical doctor um, and most psychologists, not all, but most psychologists are not medical doctors. So the prescription of psychiatric medications comes typically from either your GP or from a psychiatrist. Now, um, psychologists in our work with our clients, so if we use the examples of anxiety and depression as the most obvious examples, because they're probably the examples that we see most of, we're quite used to our clients coming along to see us and they might already be taking some medication. So um, the typical medications these days for um, depression, for example, are um, most commonly in the class of SSRIs and that stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Um, so we're taught about medications when we study clinical psychology. We're taught about how they work. We're taught about their role, um, their function within the brain and neurochemistry of the brain and how they impact um, well-being and um, assist with the recovery of certain mental health conditions. Now, um, we, the work that psychologists do is that we work around um, changes that individuals can make both in terms of behaviours and cognitive changes, so thinking habits that they can change um, and another, a range of other strategies that we can employ to help improve with symptoms. Now sometimes clients, in fact oftentimes clients come to us and they don't take medication or they've not been prescribed medication or they've chosen not to um, seek medication, they'd like to go medicine free um, and for most cases that's fine. Most people can certainly um, achieve symptom management or symptom reduction with um, anxiety or depression through um, psychological strategies. Where a psychologist might um, get concerned about the effectiveness of those strategies is when we find a client is, stru is stuck, and so you can hear some noisy people in the background, sorry. Um, when a client comes to us with, for example, depression and the, and the depression is not shifting with the use of our psychological strategies, the client is stuck within their depression and uh, the, the strategies that we're teaching are not making any changes. We then might talk to the client about whether or not they might consider having a conversation with their GP about whether or not some psychiatric medication such as an antidepressant might be um, a good next step, next step uh, for them. So for some people what we find is that the um, medication cut, can cut through the worst of the symptoms uh, and beyond that point uh, in, in tandem with medication then the, the cognitive strategies or the psychological strategies that we employ. So typically cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT um, works really, really well in combination uh, with medication for depression. So the gold standard recommended treatment for depression, for clinical depression, is a combination of SSRIs and CBT. That's not to say if you have, have depressed mood or low mood that you need medication, that is certainly not necessarily the case, um, but certainly psychologists are not, as a rule, um, against the use of medication. In fact, I'm very proactive in encouraging my clients to talk to their GP or their psychiatrist or ask for a referral to a psychiatrist uh, to discuss what medication might be best for them if they're feeling that the um, symptoms that they're struggling with are a bit overwhelming and the psychological strategies just aren't cutting through those symptoms. Now with anxiety, we often see that um, the benzodiazepine class of medication has been prescribed to assist with symptoms of anxiety. Those medications certainly have a place. They can be highly addictive 
and um, they, for anxiety they can be a bit of a band-aid measure. So when we're working with clients with anxiety, we encourage our clients to think about those um, benzodiazepines, so, so like Valium for example, for um, we encourage the use of strategies that um, reduce the symptoms of anxiety. So if you've seen my videos where I've talked about anxiety, you will have seen some of the strategies that we teach um, as mental health professionals and clinical psychologists teach our clients how to manage anxiety, how to uh, reduce the symptoms of anxiety without the necessary use of medication. That's not to say again that we don't see a role for those medications. There certainly is a role for those medications for some people. Um, but we encourage our clients to be very mindful of the addiction risk with those medications. When I talked before about antidepressant medications, they don't pose the same addiction risk. Um, when you are taking a medication for depression, um, we encourage very strongly that if you're planning to stop taking that medication that you, you do that with the guidance of your medical professional, so your GP or your psychiatrist. Because coming off an antidepressant medication uh, needs to be done in a, in a controlled manner, not because you're addicted to the medication but just because it can make you feel a bit yucky <laughs> if you stop them too suddenly. Um, so we uh, encourage an active relationship between you and your GP or you and your psychiatrist if you're, having, um, if you're taking those medications to keep track on first and foremost whether it's suiting you. So if you're feeling unwell on that medication then perhaps a conversation around whether or not it's the right dose or, or whether or not it's indeed the right drug. Um, there are several different antidepressants for example and some of those will suit some individuals more than others. Now it's never my role or any psychologist's role unless they are a medical doctor of course um, to uh, recommend certain drugs to clinicians or to recommend dosages of drugs. That's outside our scope of practice. Um, however we certainly are skilled and experienced in talking to clients about the role that medications play. So how a medication uh, for depression, for example, might assist you if you're struggling with um, symptoms of depression and if you're finding it hard to move forward in the treatment of depression. So they're just the two obvious examples. Um, there are many others. Um, there are um, many conversations we could also have, I guess, about um, the use of antidepressant medication in the perinatal field but I think that's a big conversation and I'll have that one another time perhaps um, but certainly we support um, the, um, the monitored use of um, appropriately prescribed um, antidepressants in the case of um, a mum who's depressed, severely depressed during pregnancy and after um, for lots and lots of reasons. So we're certainly not anti-medication in that realm either. So take home message today is you don't need to be on medication to come and see a psychologist. We can't prescribe you medication if you think we can uh, and we are certainly not against medication. Um, if you have a conversation with your GP when you're getting your referral you can ask the question then about whether or not they feel you should be taking some medication. Oftentimes, if you're not already taking medication, your GP might say to you, how about you try some sessions with a psychologist first and see how you go, and if you're stuck, then come back and have another conversation about medication. So when you come and see a psychologist, we certainly will communicate with the GP about whether or not, if we have concerns about whether or not we feel that perhaps the next step for you is medication, we're quite comfortable talking to your GP about that. Um, so just don't be afraid to ask the question. I guess is the take home message today. That's all from me today. I hope you've had a productive Monday. Um, it's getting dark outside so I best make a move on. Have a lovely evening. Now don't forget to let me know if you're liking these messages. I've seen a few little likes floating across the screen so thank you very much and I can see there are two people live with me today but I don't know who they are. Um, feel free to share with your friends. Um, now something I f keep forgetting to mention if you want to share this video with somebody you care about, um, or any of my videos for that matter, you can do so using private messenger. So that's another option. You can share a video via messenger. So feel free to do that if you don't want to do the sharing in a public fashion via Facebook. You can share via messenger. So that's another option for you to share with those people you care about. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye.